Good morning, everybody. I hope you can see and hear me. <clears throat> I'm a bit unsure because the first time I'm starting the session, actually, but luckily, George is there in the background. <clears throat> so welcome, all of you. Happy to be here with you this morning, exploring the topic of generosity. Thank you, Cleef, for letting me know. <laughs> I'm nervous about technical things, especially about when they are completely new. Uh, so the topic of the week actually is the steam of a cup of tea. I was not diving very, very deep in that, um, what that meant. To me, I did in the first day, actually. Um, just the sessions were inspired by the Zen tea ceremony. I join usually in the mornings here in the community where I live. And the generosity I could see there in this simplicity of just drinking tea, of just offering time together as we are here, together offering time this morning where I will speak for 15 minutes and then we do a guided meditation and after there's time for questions and your questions are actually an act of generosity to this community as well as you're just being here and there have been reflections rather than questions which is beautiful like just the sharing knowing what's going on knowing where the practice lands for you it's really helpful yeah and one thing i was exploring this week and um, going together with generosity especially in some of the meditations is um how it softens our way of seeing things our separation like how we see things as being separate from each other and this is like when i'm in the tea ceremony in the mornings and um, i'm just so connected to that like in this cup of tea, there's the whole world. <clears throat> and what goes together with generosity is gratitude. It's like the sister of generosity as well as, as renunciation. I was talking about renunciation yesterday. <clears throat> gratitude for what is there. And through that, we can also dive in a deep um, understanding of how things are interconnected if we really tune into the things. Like, for example, the cushion you are sitting on, what is it made of? And who contributed to that? And they're like uncountable beings who participated in you having the cushion here right now. And the tea, I see the earth and the water and the sky and the sun and the trees. It's all there that all make that tea possible. <clears throat> the power of giving has something magical to it. When we give, something flows back to us. Perhaps it's a soft movement in our heart. We often don't recognize. But this practice is an invitation to pause there and to feel the movement of the heart when you're giving, as well as the resistance when there is some. Our generosity grows the more we give, actually. It becomes bigger and easier. One aspect the Buddha emphasized about giving about generosity is um, he invited people to do it and how you say in English anonymous like without letting the receiver know that you gave the gift that you cleaned their kitchen that you did their garden like do something for somebody without letting them know like have you tried that I, I love it <clears throat> feeling like shoes with sweets for um, the kids around or the people you know on um, St. Nicholas Day, 6th of December here in Germany. And it lessens the idea of having to get something in return. 
less is the idea of that we are good, that we are better, that put ourselves high just because we give something. That it lessens um, our clinging and holding on to and opens up into this great gift of letting go rather than clinging. And I was also addressing the fact that when I'm giving myself time and attention and care and be really generous to myself, that I can enjoy giving more. I mean, it's more easy to enjoy giving. Like, in fact, we don't know exactly why some people are more generous than others, where it comes from. I read um, some researches about that, and some people say it's because It could be genetical even. And I think it's really related, and there are studies about that as well, um, to how your childhood was. Like, what examples did you have around you? Like, when you had parents who were very generous, and maybe you would like to reflect on that for a moment, um, then it might be easier to, to give, to do the same. <clears throat> and then you ha it's good to be aware of with it, which intention do you do. Do you just give out of tradition, out of obligation? What has happened to your heart there? When we experience trauma, it might be that we are in a phase of our life where we have to take very good care of ourselves. So it's just about us. And then there is a, a trap in there a bit because and many of us have experienced trauma and awful things in the past. And it can, and it's important to really care for us, but it can lead to this circling just around me, mine, myself. And generosity can bring us out of that. It's, in fact, there are many studies about how generosity helps on depression. Like when depressed people go and help somebody, it's really helpful. Through looking deeply into our practice and in our life around, we see that things are impermanent, very important aspect <clears throat> of our practice. Nothing, nothing around us, and you can have a look around you, will stay like it is. When we are going into our grave, <clears throat> when we're dying, we can't take anything with us from all the things around us. So the practice of generosity is encouraging to reflect on death. Letting go. Every moment, letting go again and again. So we can't take the material stuff which is around us with us so I can... Um, practice letting go. I can practice giving and through that reflecting on death. So it's a practice which goes very deep. Remembering death. It's a practice that Buddha encouraged, encouraged a lot. <clears throat> out of all those people who are around us, most of them, almost all of them, will not be alive in in hundred years. They will be dead. And we don't know how death is coming and when it's coming. And we don't know how we will approach death when it's there. So rather than pushing it aside and ignoring the fact that life is impermanent, that staying with our friends and family members is impermanent, <clears throat> opens us the possibility to see our reactions to it, our, our, our tendencies, but it also opens up our possibilities to practice even deeper like we don't know when death is going to happen so i want to live my life now as fully and loving and with as much compassion which i think we all want otherwise we wouldn't be here so as much as i can so the practice of generosity which can be a practice of remembering death 
connecting to death, connecting to impermanence of things, <clears throat> can help us in the moment of death, maybe, letting go. It would be like really weird, like if we are just struggling in this life and holding on and clinging, have a hard time of letting go of relationships, for example, like we can, there can be so much pain, suffering and attachment around that, letting go of relationships. And then at the time of death that we expect that things are easy, it's maybe not going to happen. Maybe well, like, I wonder why it should it be dif different than our life um, or our tendency to cling and hold on. So just having an open hand, a giving hand into life to others maybe can support us on our deathbed. So what I said before, the sister, one of the sisters of generosity is gratitude. <clears throat> gratitude does something to our heart. Like when we are feeling really tight, have an awful day, if you get a glimpse of a moment of gratitude, if we reflect on, okay, and what's, what's good about it? Like, where can I be grateful for? There will be so many things we can find to be grateful for, right? The light of the sun, the food we eat, the earth which carries us, a smile we got from somebody, just tiny gestures maybe. We often oversee these things. <clears throat> Gratitude and gr generosity go together with receptivity. Like you can ask yourself, how receptive are you to the beauty of life? Do we have the tendency to look on the negative things, on what is not good? Or do we want to change this tendency right now, here, today, really opening up to, okay, and what is good about it? I remember myself... Um, going to a therapist many years ago. And I told her one day, I don't know, it's maybe 15 years ago, that I was going into the forest every day for an hour. I was doing yoga two hours a day. I was doing my meditation practice. I was getting a massage once a week and I was still not feeling good. And she looked at me and she said, you don't receive these things. You do it, but you don't really feel it. You're not open to it. I was like, really resisting like yeah but but then I realized like when I'm going on a walk now it's so different than how it was like 15 years ago I'm really listening to the birds really pausing gazing opening up the view that changes something fundamental in our brain when we look at the horizon when we look into nature when this gaze opens when you could feel it, like, as I said before, like evolutionary danger was right before us. Our brain is fixated on something there. So it needs another level of viewing. And yeah, just see where you can find that in your life, where you can find some softness, softening, where things are softening for yourself where you can be more receptive and open, maybe to our partner, maybe we ignore what the nice things he or she is saying to us. Maybe we don't realize the smile of a child or the friendliness of a waiter. So I think we're all doing our best. We're here together, practicing, all doing our best. Everybody wants to be seen. Everybody wants to be loved. We have crazy ways sometimes to get seen, to get loved. And what is now the best we can offer into life? What is now the best we can give? The problems we are having, they're calling us to be kind 
They're calling us to get up, wake up, practice, be generous, open the heart. <clears throat> the problems we are having, they're not telling us that something is wrong with us. They're an invitation into life, into generosity. Hmm. So opening up into the big mystery of life through our meditation practice. So the invitation is now to find a comfortable position. <clears throat> I can recommend a position in which you are laying down. Just talking about receptivity, changing a bit, like giving a bit of shift into the idea of it's better to sit, I'm more than, I'm more this, I'm more that when I sit, and just being open to what happens when this time I just completely let go. I just surrender. Even my body, I allow it to just sink into the ground as it wants to be. So just check for yourself which posture you want to be in. So what, in, what encourages you, what supports you to let go, to drop down? <clears throat> ah, maybe sighing, maybe making a sound. Sometimes when we're very agitated, very nervous, could really help to put your fingers below your collarbones and give it a little push there, this area of your body, can really support us to make the exhalation a bit longer, letting go into nothingness there, again and again. Mm. And it can be supportive as well to shake your body before you go into the deep rest, to yawn, to sigh, to make sounds, make deep sounds, wow. animal sounds. Ah. Do whatever is useful for you to let go of everything you hear it and everything you said and <clears throat> engaged in this morning already. And arriving into this very moment, the only moment there will ever be now. With every long exhalation, sinking more into now. With every long exhalation and staying with this 
space after the exhalation, sinking more into nothingness. Just bringing <clears throat> your awareness on the hair on your head. Just being aware it's there, feeling the hair touching the head, feeling maybe the weight of the hair. There is no hair on the head, feeling the skin on the head. Looking into the hair, inwardly. Just being aware, there is hair. Then bringing your awareness to the body hair, the hair on your body. And just being kind with yourself as a reminder when anything becomes too much during this meditation where we go through different parts of the body. Open your eyes, stand up, drink a glass of water, Make that part of your meditation, what's going on when there is a lot of stuff coming up. Staying with whatever is rising up. With kindness. While you're looking into the hair on your body. All the hair everywhere on your body, every single part of your body. Being aware of your nails on your fingers, on your toes. as if looking into the nails, into the material they're made of. Everything so impermanent.
being aware of your teeth. Really tuning into your teeth. How the roots are anchoring in the jaw. The consistence of your teeth, the material. <clears throat> Just being aware, there are teeth. They're part of this body which is carrying me through life, which is supporting my spiritual practice, and they will be gone one day. Being aware of your skin all over the body. Being aware where the skin is soft and whole and where it might be damaged. Where it's dry, where it's wet. Being aware of your skin Part of this body, just there now, will be gone one day. Being aware of the flesh. <clears throat> Tuning into the color of the flesh. The consistent. The structure. Texture. Being aware where there's more flesh, where there's less. Don't forget to breathe, be kind. Being aware of your tendons. The texture, the form, the color.
Being aware of your bones, the bones in the body. One day they will just lay around somewhere, be dissolved, maybe burned. Just feeling what's going on for you when you're hearing these words. Being aware there's the earth below, the sky above, and this breath. Giving yourself maybe a nourishing hand on your chest. Being aware of the bone marrow. the bone marrow in the whole body. Tuning into the kidneys. or the one kidney and the space where the other kidney was. Tuning into the color of the kidneys, brownish color. Into the texture Feeling the kidneys moving up and down in your lower back with your breath. And tuning into your heart, the shape of your heart, the color. the movement there. Feeling into your liver, on the right side below your rib cage, underneath your rib cage. Tuning into the shape of the liver, the color of the liver.
the texture. One day and we will not know when there will be no liver. Inviting kindness, inviting grounding. Being aware of your reactions and tendencies. Being aware of your diaphragm. Between your belly and your chest, your rib cage. Are here when you cut the body open and you look from below towards the diaphragm, it looks like a white heart. Like we draw a heart. Feel into the texture of the diaphragm, the movement. Be aware of your spleen. Left below your rib cage. Be aware of your lungs. The shape of your lungs. <clears throat> the movement. Impermanent. All this body so impermanent. And be aware of your large intestine. Really tuning in. Visualizing. Mm. 
the small intestine. In the stomach, tuning into the texture of the shape. The material. There's moisture pass blood. Sweat. <clears throat> Bile. Brain. Fat. Tears. Saliva. Mucus, synovial fluid, urine, and one day all of that will be gone. And where are you now at this very moment? Breathing in, breathing out. Being part of the earth element. Being water. Being air. Being heat, fire, being space,
And as you slowly start with micro movements, <clears throat> with micro changes in the breath pattern, maybe to move your body again, I read you a poem from Theodor Storm, a German writer who lived in the 19th century born 1817. How if life, how if life were nothing but then the burning of a light? Not a single particle is lost, but we ourselves go into nothingness. For what we call body and soul so firmly formed into one. It dissolves into a thousand particles and swarming through the barren space. The same life always prevails. Nature goes its eternal course. In a thousand newly created beings, these thousand particles rise. But the being is lost, which existed only through this covenant. If chance did not unite the dusty particles anew into one being. So thank you so much. Oh, for your meditation. It tells me that the screen is frozen and no sound. <coughs> well, how of life were nothing <coughs> than the burning of a light. Not a single particle is lost. Okay, dear fellow travelers, thank you for letting me know. So, probably an issue on the other side. Yeah, <clears throat> talking about the Dana Parami this week, the first of the Paramis. Um, it also came often to my mind that giving seems to be easier when you're poor. And I'm sure many of you have made that experience, traveling through countries where people have less than most of us have maybe, and how easy it is for them to give. And gratitude and generosity, as I said at the beginning, they go together. <clears throat> it's like this big exchange which has happened naturally, mystically, as I, when I was walking through Turkey with my children more than 800 kilometers. They were like so amazed by the generosity of people, by people offering us every day food and a bed. Their gratitude, the gratitude of my kids, and they were then eight and... 14, grew every day, every, every step on this path. And I felt this mystical interconnection. It's like when, like, I remember we were sleeping outside quite, quite a lot of nights and because there was no shelter, there was no house. Otherwise, people would have invited us because that's what they all did. And there was so much gratitude just for the earth, just for the fireplace, for the next food. Sometimes we didn't know where to buy food for the next time. And our gratitude grew and there was so little we had. And there was so much, there was so much we had. And there came the point where my children, they 
decided for themselves to give back to earth. They decided to eat only vegan. They, there was a, a seeing of interconnectedness happening through walking so many days through nature, seeing the destruction of nature. There was incredible amount of garbage there, like mountains of garbage. Like we literally, we thought, oh, it's another 15 kilometers. We just have to go over that mountain there. And as we come closer, we saw it's a mountain out of rubbish. No river to go in to wash ourselves because they were so dirty. And all this, all this seeing together with the generosity my children received, being in the so tuned in flow of life, the, the mystic of gratitude and wanting to give back. That's what we're doing here. This is how Sangha life exists, isn't it? Like, I'm so grateful for being invited here. Like, it's, it's like a miracle a bit to be able to, to share and to be here with you. I have a lot of gratitude for that. And I um, often read about gratitude you are expressing in the chat. So there's gratitude on your side. And there's this generosity flowing. It goes within, like, I'm offering my, si my time here. And you're offering mm, a financial support on top of being here and showing up. With, with, if this wouldn't be there, that all wouldn't work together here. But your financial support is really important for make that happening. And I'm really grateful for the dana you pay, the dana I receive. I thank you so much for that. I never have a chance to say it afterwards when it appears on my account. So thank you all for your generosity so much. So there is some time for questions. If you have a question, you could write it in capital letters so it's clear it's a question. I was wonder, I'm wondering how that meditation went for you actually because it can quite be quite intense um here else. yeah natalie says she experienced the same generosity and kindness when traveling in mexico people who had so little giving so much yeah yeah Why is that? There's a deep understanding, right, of seeing the other, listening to the to the other person. Mm, thinking about your teeth being impermanent was hard, or yes, yeah, yeah, and it's a practice. I I really want to mention that. Um, and I might have the link for it somewhere. Did I write that down? I have a look. Um, it's, it's from the Satipana Sutra where the Buddha um, encouraged to it's this meditation where you go on 32 parts of your body. And actually, it's, it's done much longer. Like I, I did it now very fast and I didn't go in detail. But I really can encourage you to, to do this practice. Like if you find um, the inner space for that um you can find it online i i got that i think from bob's bob's style the um meditation teacher it's called the 32 parts of the body meditation something like that and you can do like what I did now would be like three meditation and one almost an hour and you really um and there's this <clears throat> maybe um George you could post that afterwards for me if I write it to you um there's this meditation where it explains every every single part all the part all those parts I just mentioned it's explained in detail how they look like what color what shape and you get pictures with it so you can really tune in it's it's quite strong like yeah <clears throat> Yeah. 
Oh, this is touching, Adina. Thank you for sharing. This meditation made me aware, reminded me, I'm still alive. I'm alive. Yes, yes. We can forget. Yeah. And maybe what could be one step into this aliveness today? Maybe a courageous step. Courage means to have fear and go a step forward. What could be new there? What could bring the aliveness into the next hour of this day? Um, Hmm. Heidi says, this was a comforting practice for me today. Ah, interesting. I needed the reminder that my current situation is very temporary. Yeah. <clears throat> Catherine says, thank you so much for the meditation. It helped me soften around the reality of my 39-year-old mother's physical and mental condition and my own aging body. All this is the context of generosity of generosity to helpful. Yeah. Yes, thank you very much for sharing. I'm happy you got something out of this practice. Um, yeah, because what I said at the beginning, we can underestimate how um, yeah, what we can gain on reflecting on generosity, of on practicing generosity, just being generous. Being generous to our aging body, yes. Rather than standing there in front of the mirror and getting freaked out because there's another rimple, is this how you say it in English? Like, wow, aging, change. Whew, breathing. Thank you, Margaret, for looking it up on Google, the 32 parts of the body. Yeah, it's powerful. Hmm. Patricia shares, thank you for that meditation that brought gratitude for our bodies and their interconnection to all of life. I laugh, laugh it, it, it as it felt like I truly inhabited this body. I also saw the link with letting go through intimacy with what we have. Yeah, oh, how beautiful. Thank you for the comment, Patricia, yes. Yes, it's, it's, for me, it's all about inhabiting this body. Like, this is how we relate to gravity. This is how we relate to life. This is how we relate to each other. And we have the tendency to walk next to our bodies. A lot of people do. Like, they, they're not in their bodies. And we can, like, really dive into this again and again, into this embodiment. And this can, movement can help with that. Like, the ground can really help with that. <clears throat> yeah thank you so much for expressing your gratitude natalie says it's your first week with sangha life wow i'm glad you are here <clears throat> and you um mentioned mary oliver what are you going to do with this one wild precious life she says yes And to end this session with, I do have a poem from Mary, Mary Oliver. And it says, lingering in happiness. After rain, after many days without rain, it stays cool, private, and cleansed under the trees. And the dampness there, married now to gravity, falls branch to branch, leaf to leaf, down to the ground, where it will disappear but not, of course, vanish except to your eyes. The roots of the oaks will have their share and the white threads of the grasses and the cushion of moss, a few drops, round as pearls, will enter the mole's tunnel. And soon so many small stones, buried for a thousand years, will feel themselves being touched. May 
all beings feel touched. May all beings tune into the interconnectedness of everything. May all beings live safe and protected. May all beings be free and may there be peace on earth. Thank you all so much for joining. Thank you. Bye-bye.